Well, one of the beautiful things about Major League Baseball is its diversity. And at the heart of it were the Negro Leagues. They helped make our game the global game that it is today. You see, Negro League players were oftentimes the first Americans to play in many Spanish-speaking countries. And of course, when we went there, we were treated like heroes. And then come back home, and you'd be treated like a second-class citizen. So as a result, a lot of Negro League players would call those Spanish-speaking countries home. You'd be hard-pressed to find a region of the world where baseball is more beloved than the Caribbean. For decades, some of the game's biggest stars have hailed from countries like Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, and Cuba. Icons like Clemente, Pujols, and El Duque have truly made baseball the global sport it is today. And you can trace the lineage of this love affair between baseball and countries south of the border right back through the legends of the Negro Leagues. The relationship between Spanish-speaking countries and the Negro Leagues was mutually beneficial. Not only did Black American players love the treatment they received in the Caribbean, local audiences loved watching Negro Leaguers play, and young local ball players were inspired by what they saw. It's well known, for example, that the legendary Roberto Clemente learned his sweet swing and smooth fielding style from watching Negro League outfielders as a youngster in his native Puerto Rico. Additionally, for dark-skinned Latino players who were shut out by Major League Baseball's color barrier, the Negro Leagues offered an opportunity to play ball in America. Two of the most famous Latinos who starred in the Negro Leagues were from Cuba, and both now are enshrined in Baseball's Hall of Fame. Cristobal Torriente was a stocky power hitter who could also pitch. Called the Babe Ruth of Cuba, Torriente actually matched up against the great Bambino in 1920. The New York Giants had traveled down to Cuba for a nine-game series and added Babe Ruth for the tour. Torriente out-hit and out-played Ruth, helping his Cuban team, Almanderas, capture the series five games to four. Soon after, Torriente began his storied Negro Leagues career in America. He starred for the Chicago American Giants and Kansas City Monarchs, slugging his way to the batting title in 1920. Next up was fellow Cuban star Martin De Higo, one of the most fascinating players in baseball history. He was nicknamed El Maestro, the master, because he didn't just play one position, he mastered them all. He is the only player in the history of the sport to be immortalized in five different countries. He's in the Cuban, Mexican, Venezuelan, and Dominican Baseball Halls of Fame. And in 1977, he got his plaque in Cooperstown. Now, if that's not international, I don't know what is. Now, the Negro Leagues didn't just bring the game of baseball south of the border. In 1927, years before Babe Ruth and the All-Americans would make a similar trip, an all-black team called the Royal Giants traveled to Japan for a friendly barnstorming tour. During the games, the black players awed their opponents with elite fielding and base running. Hall of Fame Negro League of Biz Mackey put on a thrilling power display too, hitting the first ball completely out of the park at Meehing Young Stadium. The Royal Giants went 23 and 1 on the Goodwill trip and impressed the Japanese with their gentlemanly kindness on and off the field. The tour was a huge success that helped popularize the game of baseball in Japan, a country that would go on to produce its share of baseball legend for decades to come. Indeed, when it comes to bringing baseball to the world and the world to baseball, the international legacy of the Negro Leagues is undeniable. I had the opportunity to show some of this memorabilia to our dear friend, the former Major League Japanese star, Ichiro Suzuki. And as you can well imagine, he lit up like a Christmas tree. He was so surprised to learn that these brothers had been to his native homeland as early as 1927. A subsequent tour of the Philadelphia Royal Giants would take place in 1934. Now, as we look at the popularity of professional baseball in Japan, it's highly possible had it not been for those two tours of Japan by the Philadelphia Royal Giants and the Negro Leagues, perhaps we don't get 
Ichiro Suzuki playing over here, or Shohei Atani. That's the impact that the Negro Leagues had in a global capacity.